the fancy cessation, here we go. Always been told good, good girls don't. Always trying hard to make sure you don't. Developing what looks like a natural dislike for the opposite sex. Ensuring that you only have one and call nobody else ex. The perfect little girl in a scary and wicked world, soft in sex. She's physically rated pure. Yet when she's all alone, purity is something of which she ain't so sure. Purity is really something that lacks when she dives deep into her personality. Deep. Dignity is what she lost the first time she considered what is real. Reality is what disqualifies her skill, as evidence proves that thief is here more than just skill. Wanting to remain pure in her death, she always imagines a stronger force wearing a tight shirt. The play button is praised as the events displayed in her mind and thought. Sitting back, she daydreams a stronger force forcing itself on her. She's bored, not wanting to be disturbed. She throws the remote away. She's never bored. She sees herself trying hard to resist. Yet to know her well. Then she delightfully gives in as he is permitted to forcibly prevail. The feeling that she is purely out of control excites her, driving her up the sapira in delight till she reaches the peak. Her story's climax, being the only being around, gives her the opportunity to more than just relax. She's a good girl and she doesn't, making sure her physical being agrees with her mother. He's the devil and he doesn't. Forcing himself on her, he doesn't even bother. Does this really count as purity in the eyes of our Heavenly Father? Pleasure is all she desires, not acting out is all purity requires. Fantasy is what she uses to satisfy her desires. Using her brain to pleasure herself, she never tires. Being labeled a good girl who doesn't is what she always desires. I get your argument, sis. Nevertheless, how about we together analyze it? Please. Firstly, the truth is, good girls do, and it's passionate. The sex scene can be your teacher. They, however, do only after exchanging the marriage vows before the preacher. The Holy Scriptures have the best explanation. They can be your best teacher. Secondly, you have to face the fact that despite being saved, your mind is still defiled. Conforming to the pattern of this world is therefore what you and transformed you longs for. Nevertheless, because you want to prove to everyone you've been to the Holy One reconciled, you try hard to attach yourself to neither a friend nor a stranger. Trouble is what you end looking for. You are afraid if you do, the whole figure it out and you'll be labeled an adulterous from the Christian community exile. Your messed up mind therefore comes quickly to your rescue. A safe way that can help you to have the pleasure you long for and add to your still the renewed you. You therefore delight in a stranger's embrace as he forces himself on you. You add this beyond your control. So you trust him to take you for a ride up the sapito as you simply relax. You completely give yourself away as he harshly drives you the, to, towards the peak. Your story is climax. The intense pleasure of reaching the peak is the reason you keep leading a double life. Yet truth be told, you never desire to have anyone force themselves on you in real life. A thought that makes you disgusted in real life, yet excited in your world of fantasy. You however do it even more as it still whispers to you you're a good girl. He's always forcing himself on you and you don't have control, you don't. You're surely a good girl. Truth be told, if good girls don't be the standard, then you're far from being good. So sorry for sounding so harsh. He who looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed a murder with her in, her in his heart. Likewise, she who looks at a man to look uh, to lust after him has already committed a murder with him in her heart. I agree. Physically, you're a good girl. You don't. But spiritually, Christ says you do in your heart, and so you're not. I didn't write this to condemn you. There ain't no condemnation to those that are in Christ. I wrote this to tell you the truth behind your fantasy. Thinking about these things is what Paul and Timothy to the Philippians had to say. Whatever is pure, holy, and true, the footers on every page of this talk will qualify. Tell me if your fantasy agrees to any one of these suggestions. Confront the reality. I didn't write this to make you feel bad and hate yourself for life. This ain't my intention. Let not your perfectionism hinder you from continu continuously striving towards perfection. Refuse to stay on the ground each time you fall. Rise up and battle. I suggest you trust Shannon. This is every young woman's battle. Reading her book will surely prepare you for the battle. Learn to guard your heart and mind too, besides your physical body. Staying away from those stingy romantic novels and movies to keep you strong. Allow God's word to transform you as it continuously renews your mind year long. I know it will take time. Whoever said Rome was built in a day. But if you're patiently consistent, God will make a way. He knows you may be a sexual being. He therefore made marriage to be the place you enjoy that part of your being. But right now, you got to learn to control yourself. From youth to last, start fleeing. Your Holy Spirit is with you. Let him guide you as you discover the mystery hidden in Christ's death revealed. Then you escape the fantasization and you realize you've been really relieved.